Good evening, my name's Alex Campbell. And who are you? I'm um, me. I'm Ella. And you're watching the ninth episode of Dissecting Trek. On this episode, I'll be dissecting Mira, an epic zombie drama. <laughs> This episode opens up with the crew discovering a planet that is an exact duplicate of Earth. Earth? Not the Earth. Another Earth. The crew then beams down to find a deserted and decrepit version of 60s America. Now some people might say that it's a pretty big coincidence that the crew of the Enterprise found a planet matching Earth exactly, and that when they beamed down it was just like 60s America, and that possibly the production crew just wanted to use a pre-existing set from a different show to film this episode with. And to that I would say, just, 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 just watch the show, okay? Pro it's probably what happened though. Uh, that, that, that's what happened. Definitely happened that way. Earth. As it was in the early 1900s. Or the, uh, mid-1900s. I would say, Captain, approximately 1960. Oh. Kirk then punches a zombie several times. At this point in the narrative, I was already completely engaged with the mystery that was unravelling and the haunting horror elements that were threatening our heroes. The exciting music and the quick pace of this episode also makes for a lot of immersion. Come on! I wonder which members of this team are gonna die. Kirk then comes across a young girl who expels exposition at an alarming rate. That was when they started to get sick in the before time. We hid, then they were gone. Am I doing all right? You're doing fine. The basic story of this episode is there's a disease that takes over the inhabitants of this planet once they reach puberty. So you have all the kids who have sected themselves off and hidden away and created their own society, and then the people who have passed puberty and become zombies, basically. Now you might ask if they're all children, how do they breed and how they're still people on this planet. Well, the children's lives are extended, and these, children's are, uh, these children have been there for several hundred years. So they're the first generation after this disease, and for some reason, they live for a long time. I don't know. Let's roll with it. This virus annihilated the entire adult population in a very short period, leaving only the children. But that means these children... ...could very well be immensely old. Obviously the next plot point is going to be the crew becoming infected with the disease that killed that zombie guy. Well, that zombie guy had a helping hand into the grave. And there you have a museum piece, Doctor. Lens type. Manually operated, light activated. Spare me the analysis, Mr. Spock, please. It's enough that it works. This is the interplay between characters that I missed in the last episode, which was void of Spock and Bones. There may be other emotions at work in this case, Captain. She likes you, Jim. She's becoming a woman. Pretty name. For a pretty young woman. Pretty? 
very pretty. Please don't fuck her, Kirk. Come here. You wanna go someplace with Sure. Bones explains uh, the disease that the crew's been infected with is going to kill them in about seven days. Now this plot device, a uh, ticking clock of sorts, is a great way to keep tension and keep the audience interested in what's going to happen. Verified, Captain. We have seven days. This whole episode has a really good feel and motion to it. It just keeps on moving, unlike some original series episodes which just drag and drag and drag. The actor who played the leader of the gang of children was actually 27 when they filmed this episode and his character is meant to be 16. I, I find it funny to imagine this 27 year old at bars looking like he does, trying to flirt with women. Just getting repelled again and again. Poor fella, I guess. But Mary is with them. Why? Why? What you gonna do, John? I don't. I don't know. I know what we've gotta do. There's more than we see. Somewhere. Up in the sky. Maybe somewhere. This episode was also banned by the BBC after it first aired for several decades. Audience members rang up and complained about the violence in it. Some people just like to complain, I guess. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? There's a scene that I really enjoyed where Yulman talks about trying to get Kirk to look at her legs when they were back on the Enterprise. And she has a bit of an emotional break and then asks Kirk once more to look at her legs. The camera pans down and the infection is spread. It's a really good character moment that I thoroughly enjoyed. I used to try to get you to look at my legs. Captain. Look at my legs. Then the great James T. Kirk, captain of the flagship of Starfleet, is beaten up by a bunch of kids. <laughs> Jasper and I were once beaten up by some kids at a service station. <laughs> so the gang of children who are the main antagonists in this episode use the word grumps for grown-ups. And I was alright with that word, it's a bit silly, but they just use that word over and over and over again in this episode and I, I grew to hate it by the end, it just irritated me. Every time they said grumps, it was like... You know grumps, you know what they do? I remember the grumps, things your grumps did. And grumps, I don't know that. Grumps don't help. What are grumps? Grumps. Talk to the other grups with these little boxes. But grups, they know things and all that. The grups. No grups, no onlys. Not the grups. Just like the grups you remember and the creatures you're afraid of. Just stop! In the end, this show concludes somehow. I don't know how I fell asleep. But anyway, this episode was suspenseful, exciting, and well executed. I think it was a really good episode in comparison to other episodes in the original series and I would recommend that you all go and watch it right now. Do it. Mary, she really loved you, you know. Yes. I never get involved with older women, you know. Thank you for watching and it'd really help out if you could like, subscribe and in the comments tell me how I got all the facts wrong and how my opinion is null and void. Thank you and good night.